called him. Now, what I want you to do now, and I want you to do it looking at each other's face, is you're going to clap for over 20 seconds and thank God for the success of your neighbor that you're sitting next to and make sure they understand. Amen. What's your last name? Payton. Stand up. You hear me talking to you. Payton. All right. And what's your first name? Because we met in the office, but we didn't exchange names. Antonio. Now, I'm going to say something to you that's going to sound a little unusual, but if it makes sense, you will wisely walk down the steps and then run. You will not jump down the steps. Um... Oh, he took his money back. I, uh, <laughs> you are about to become a very successful young man. But God is fixing something because your success, I have to clear this, is coming through a woman. Her name starts with a J. It's almost like James, but it's like Jam Jamisha. That's your wife. All right, I want to talk to you about this now. It's okay, cause because I'm getting on the plane after this, y'all. I'm 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 all right. Don't get nervous. I'm because there are things I could say that I would never say. When you prophesy, you take out the trash and only talk about the treasure. Deep breath, you good with me. Trust me. She's going to own at least two or three businesses. One is going to look like taxes. Another one's going to look like doing something for homes or fixing up things or designing things. Are you still married to her? Are y'all okay? What does she do for a living? Uh, medical customer service. Medical customer service. What does she do on the side? What is she opening presently? Nothing. Her cousin has a design, uh, interior design business. Her cousin yeah. is, and a tech. Is she speaking to this cousin? Mm -hmm. Are they close? Very. Okay, listen to me, man. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Don't interview me. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> when you, y'all have children? Y'all yeah. need at least six bedrooms. How many kids do you have? Four. Four. Okay, that's close, ain't it? Because mm -hmm. mm. you need one for you and then four for the others. That's five. And I can't say nothing about the other rooms, so that's your business. You're going to run down there. When you do, we're going to praise God for you. And I'm going to ask God to grant y'all with this newer home, a newer home, where you don't keep stressing because you're stressing. Lord, where are we going to live? What are we going to do? How are we going to... What does Arkansas... What's Arkansas? That's where you're from? All right. Now, listen to me. I want you... You're only getting what he got 21 years ago. So, if his came to pass, you ought to be happy right now tonight. I may not be here 21 years from now to hear you talk about it, though. When you run, we're going to praise God for you because we just finished clapping for the success of our neighbors. I'm going to ask God to do this by the fall, help you get where you need to be. Take your run, and the rest of us will praise God for him. What's March 1st, 2nd, or 3rd? What's March? That's your birthday, the first, right? I, I, I need to, as a matter of fact, I'll get back with you later. Be, be, be seated. I want to say to the woman in the orange hat who's born July 17th, right? I want to say to you, please, I want to say to you.
that God says he's about to give you a brand new heart because you're going to live more years than expected. God said his gift to you on July 17th coming is new organs in your entire body. Are y'all jealous or y'all happy? God's going to bless your going in and your coming out. God said, because you've been faithful over few and held your mouth on certain situations. God says, tell her I've been there with her through it all. Tell her, live long and prosper. And anyone that's not jealous, you will praise God for her. You may be seated. Now, we are online, right? So we got to minister to people online and offline and around line. Who's Beasley? Is that you? You better not walk them. Let somebody else take that job. How are you? Have you retired yet? You're still working. Are you ready for retirement? God is going to make sure that you get your full package. God says the devil's trying to fight the amount, but God said, tell him I'm making some adjustments. Are y'all jealous or are you happy right now? Uh -oh. Now, that's how you're supposed to act. When God is speaking. Let me explain something. It's 928. I got up after 9. I'm going to try not to hold you. But I want to explain something to all of you. If we prophesy to you. And we are right and you don't get it. It's because we were true prophets. But you were false recipients. Your response to the word of God determines the validity of that word. It does not happen just because it's spoken. The woman that got healed from an issue of blood, she had to crawl. You got to do something. That's why I made this brother run. You don't just stand in the presence of God and get him. What is it? What is it? Ray? Ray born in May. May, May and Ray. May the 3rd. And I want to say to you something. Now, I don't prophesy as much as I used to. I'm a pastor now, but I guess God is doing his thing. God wants your latter days to be greater than your beginning. My my son and daughter, they passed in Tyler, but where are you from? Oh, Tyler, okay. So, they were your children? These are my children, but I was the youth minister. Really? Oh, this is a connection for real. Well, thank you for the deposit because she's powerful. I'm just managing what you sold. God says, tell you on your next praise, every man in here that praises loud with you, God said, I'll give them new financial resources as well. And somebody better believe that. You may be seated. Keep your eyes on him. Don't look at this.
There's a, there's a, who, uh, who just beat that tambourine? How old are you? If I told you that when you beat the tambourine that God says, I'm taking him back three years, I'm going to recreate grades and I'm going to send him to a school. God said, the devil tried to fight your future concerning your education, but when you beat that tambourine, you just issued a whole new life for yourself. And somebody loud ought to thank God for him. I don't know how to do this one, but there's a family in here that's going to be blessed because of one woman. This one woman has some tabakasia lamoya. Hallelujah. This one woman has some type of walk with God that is going to make God bless her children and her children's children. I don't have their names, but the Lord spoke this to me. And when I say this, if any of you are present, you ought to get excited because God says, you have been blessed because of her. The last name is like Roseberry. It's something like Roseberry. They are part of jurisdiction? Okay. Well, I hope that one of them will watch me online, either Jason or Jonathan. I am... Um, But being that they are not here, we're going to thank God in a minute very loud for them because through this grandmother or someone, all of them are being blessed, even them that shouldn't be blessed. It's ridiculous, but this woman's walk with God is so tight that it's protecting her entire family. So let's praise God for... The Roseberry or something like that family. No, no, get loud with your mouths. Do you know them, sir? Do you know them? How do you know them? Oh, they're in your district. So who's Gregory? You. McGill. Mc. M-C-G-I-L-L, -L, something like that. All right. I am... Um... I'm going to be Hashia time. I'm going to say something that may sound crazy to you. And the Lord says he's one of them that when people are not real, he kills them. Don't kill me. Because you bury those folk for a living. <clears throat> what business are you in? Funeral business. So you won't be getting me. But let me talk to you about something. I want to say to you. That this is such a far-fetched prophecy that I've never, I've probably given far-fetched prophecies probably a hundred times in my life. Most of them have come to pass. I, I have not seen all of them. But if you run the night and do your little, you got a weird dance. Because I see it. I don't know. When you do, when you come out here and you do it, God says to tell you that some type of way you're going to be brought into the most unusual meeting about the business being handed over to you. Especially in the crematory department. You're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have to get them there. Somebody is tired. 
Somebody, somebody with the name M. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little tired now. Where do you work? Golden Gate Funeral Home. Was. You just got fired. And you heard me say you're about to get a call. And somebody's tired is going to offer you their business. You weren't listening to me, were you? No, he couldn't been listening. I even gave him a letter of a new name. And he still, he still wasn't listening. You got to mahashi prokosin bahai. You got to listen. Yes. You have to listen. You have timed out because your season is about to begin. Where people will work for you. Ishana nahai. There's some jealous folk over here, but we okay. Yeah. Y'all got to stop taking sides. This is one jurisdiction. This is one jurisdiction. One. What's that, an L? You got a middle name? Lee. Okay. You, you really didn't need a prophecy. You just needed one so that you know God hears you. When I get a prophecy, which is once every eight, nine, ten years, it's God's way of telling me he still hears me. You're going to dance. Get on your music. He ain't going to be on beat. But y'all going to play on the two folk. When this young man praises God, all of you that need new employment, you need student loan debt cancel, y'all got 30 seconds to praise him right now. Let's go. Oh, he... Are y'all clapping? Cut the saxophone mic on. Amen. You may be seated. What's your name? Joshua? Joshua what? Is your driver's license clean? When you started screaming, the Lord says, now you have to go get another car. God says, you didn't really have the down payment in certain things, but God said when you screamed, he just made somebody put you in a brand new car of your choice. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to dance right where you are. Put your hands together. Be seated.
We will. We'll catch up with the dance in a few minutes. But I thank God for his goodness. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them what a mighty God we serve. Now all of y'all that are really Kojic, scream across the room and tell somebody, He's a mighty God! He's a mighty God! Mighty God! Yes, he is! Yes, he is! Yes, he is. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Hiya. Woo. Shaman, the Boho. Glory. Just touch two or three people and say he's a mighty God. Come on, Jesus. Stop by here. Glory. 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 Show ya. Yanda ba. Oh, ya. Si yanda ba. Retoro ba. Koshanda ba kaya. Reba, yon shiandama. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oshamaha. One, two, one, two, three. You may be seated. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Give me a few minutes to visit this text. Hallelujah. And give me just a little more gain. In the monitors in the house, just a tad bit of gain, not volume. The book of Genesis, bring it down a little bit, chapter 29. Genesis chapter, thank you, 29. Genesis chapter. Now you that didn't get a prophecy, this scripture will be your prophecy before it's over. I don't just prophesy, I preach prophetically. So I don't just find fancy sermons, I find sermons that help people find their way. Genesis 29 verses 31 through 35. After you've stood for this, you that do, I want you to be seated but keep your Bibles open because we have to go to a few more scriptures if you don't mind. Church say amen, don't die now. When the Lord saw that Leah was hated. And let me say this right off the cuff for 10 folk who will scream. You are not going to produce until someone hates you. And you are closer to production when it's your family. Y'all quiet on the whole first row. Can I get the second row to talk to me? When the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. He put her in a place of production after he saw she was hated. 
But Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bare a son, called his name Reuben. For she said, surely the Lord has looked upon the affliction of his handmaid. And now, therefore, my husband will love me possibly. 33, she conceived again, bare a son, and said, because the Lord hath heard that I was hated. Y'all not talking jurisdiction. He hath therefore given me this son also. Which means every time I'm hated, I'm going to be producing. And... <laughs> And God, I won't have to, called his name, and she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again. And bear a son. What's your name? You're going to become one of the greatest evangelists in this jurisdiction. God said, you're running, you're doing things, you're gifted in all areas. But God said, when I'm through with you, your name shall ring across the country. You're going to be a blessed individual. I'm sorry. And she bare again and bare son and said, now maybe this time my husband will be joined to me. And she called this third son Levi. Oh, verse 35, she conceived. Again, look at your neighbor if they're friendly. Tell them all of this producing just for being hated on. Look at somebody tell me, do me a favor. Tell me you hate me. Just go and tell me you hate me. Because all you I don't know why folk don't like me. Because you're too productive. See, I'm prophesying. You are in a season of production. Stop trying to make friends and make some haters. This is her fourth production. She conceived again. Bear a son and she said, look at what she says. Now will I praise the Lord. And she called this son a name that has never been heard of until she birthed it. She called his name praise. And then God shut her womb up and she was barren. Be seated. Y'all don't like me and I'm fine. Would you rather be loved and barren or hated and productive? That's a question. If you'd rather be hated and productive, jump up and shout yes. All right, and all the rest of you that didn't, that's why you loved and broke. Loved and unemployed because you're too busy trying to make friends. <laughs> the question should arrive and keep your devices and Bibles open and put the scriptures on the screen. We'll stay in this chapter. Let me talk to... Brother Beasley and folk who will be my friend for about 20 minutes. If you don't love me, why did you marry me? All right, I'll leave that question out. Because some of y'all actually have the answer. The reason why certain people get attached to some of us because I'm hated on. The reason why I got three or four haters in here tonight, but I'm happy, I'm glad you here. That means I'm gonna produce when I get out of here again. And most of your haters are the ones that say, I love you, I'm in your corner, you know I'm down with you. But let me tell the truth, this side won't talk, but I need some more verbal talkers they got with you even though they can't stand you because they can't stand without you. Now, I need you to understand. They won't give you your credit, but they'll use you as crutches. I want you to understand this. This jurisdiction should be jam-packed, but the problem is they love you but they hate everybody else. They love 
love you. They just don't like that it's at this church. There's nothing wrong with this church or any of you. What's wrong is the person that hates you has a bad perception. And I'm going to say this for three screamers who jump up and be debt free. They really want to be you. They're trying to figure out the mystery. How you got a little paying job, but you live in a beautiful home. How? Are you not even good looking, but your husband is fine? How in the world, how is your life? So successful, chairman. How do I make more than you, but you're living better than me? How? Now, before we get into the preach thing, let me take you down to verse 16 through 18 of the same chapter. I'll be hooping, hollering in about 25 minutes, and I'll be leaving 10 minutes after that. Genesis 29, verse 16. See, I didn't call some of you out to pro prophesy who your haters are, because that's not prophecy. But I am prophesying through teaching you that if you just go on and let them hate you, you can outgrow them. What? That's what I'm, Never let your enemies see you sweat. <laughs> Who's the feature of my sermon? Her name is Leah. And I hate when people... Uh, talk about people they don't know. So what I want to properly do for five of you is I want to introduce her. Because it's bad to talk about she's hated but not even tell you who she is. If you hate me, at least know me. Y'all talk to somebody because I ain't going to holler till it's time. So just tell somebody, if you want to know the real story, just ask me. Don't, I mean, don't make up a story. Because some of us are saved, but well, I'm sorry, Bishop, but we save and we steal thugs. You don't have to go researching. Huh? I'm not upset with you because you know something about me. I'm upset with you because you could have asked me instead of made it up. This is. Let me talk to talkers. We all have a past. Them titles don't erase your past. Them titles make you a bigger target. They're going to get mad at me, but the Lord is pushing me to say something. So give me 10 folk who will pray for me. Y'all leave Tony Evans alone. He sat himself down. What's wrong with y'all? If some of you were honest, you'd have sat down a long time ago. Mistakes ain't never sat nobody down. The man is just integral. But show me someone like him that is as productive as he is. I hate when failure lies on success. Verses 16 through 18. I just wanted to diffuse the infection of rumors. Because it can mess up a whole church, an entire country. Well, let's talk about Leah. Look at verse 16 through 18. Laban had two daughters. Give me about five Baptocostal people, please. The name of the elder, I thought Henderson would help me, but he was up preaching since 730. 
had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. The name of the younger was Rachel. Now y'all know they got a daddy. Leah, descriptive, was tender-eyed. Some theologians, I'm going to fix it later, they called this cockeyed. Don't laugh now, your child might come out like that. She was tender-eyed. Rachel, beautiful. Well favored. But let me say this for three folk who are not talking to me. As beautiful as Rachel is, she can't produce. And that's wrong with some of you. You look better than what you're doing. No, th th this is long hair, short money. You know, I'm trying to find out how we do this. If we judge people by how you are looking tonight, you should have been able to give $700 by yourself. But when you didn't move that, let all of us know it's just an illusion. Leah! Y'all wanted prophecy. Tender-eyed and Rachel. Beautiful, thank you, and well-favored. Rachel is good to look at. Leah is good to be with. <laughs> but after you have a beautiful painting in your house, there will come a time when you won't look at it no more. Jacob, y'all remember him? Loved Rachel. Y'all ain't reading the Bible. Loved her so much he said, I'll serve her daddy for free for seven years. Now let me tell you something right now. I want God to give me no woman that I would work for seven years for no money. Now Lord, you keep that. See, some of y'all missing it because a picture versus a paycheck is two different things. You can't pay rent with beauty. Oh, you can probably get three months of it paid. But once he gets over the picture, he will look at another picture. I am going to fix this. I promise you won't regret that I came, but let me get here. Some commentaries suggest that these two sisters were twins and that the only way you could differentiate the two is her eyes that they looked exactly alike except you would have to look into one of their eyes see how quiet it well if it was twins it would have said they were twins no that's not true it only mentions twins when there's a divine purpose for the twin. There is no divine purpose for either of these two women. I hope some woman scream, except to help God birth 12 tribes. That's it. And for the record, being that y'all are sleeping on me, but you were up when we were prophesying, see prophet, but you don't want me to say. Because prophecy is beautiful, but preaching is what gets you where you're going. Prophecy is nothing but a picture of your future. It ain't a promise you'll ever get there. They said that in order for you to know the difference in the two, you would have to look at Leah's eyes. The problem with the word tender-eyed, where I grew up in the black church as well, prior to going to school to learn the scriptures a little more, I, I just said what my grandfather and all of them said, that she was cockeyed. But when, I, but, but when I went to seminary, 
they looked up this word in the original Hebrew and they said, I'm telling you what, what, what they said. Ten of y'all who want to be debt free, talk to me for the next few minutes. They said that when you looked in her eyes, you can tell which twin she was because she had low self-esteem. They said she lacked confidence. They said when you looked at her, you can tell something's wrong. Look at somebody and tell them, stop looking like what you're going through. Why y'all act like you've been saved all your life? I used to party and go to clubs, right? And you can look at five women at the table and you can brand all five. That one easy. That one lonely. That one got a lot of children. That girl crazy. The fine one is off. You know, you can... Re See, I can't get up. Real people, like a woman can go to a table with 12 men and be like the real man that's the head is the quiet one at the table. This man got all his jewelry. He broke. That's a knockoff. That's all caps. Y'all ain't talking. This fake. But... When you have the gift of discernment, you can look over the room and pick up spirits of each individual. I'm only talking to folk who want to learn. And you will try to warn somebody, if I were you, I'd leave that person alone. Why? He fine, girl. I'm telling you, I agree. He fine, but something wrong. I'm telling you. Some of you ain't saying amen because you're the one we need to avoid. I get it. How you see yourself will determine how other people see you. So Jacob did not like what he saw in Leah. She lacks confidence. She can't help me do nothing. She always crying. Why are her eyes like that? But when he saw Rachel, the Bible says he kissed her at a well called Jacob's Well now. And he kissed her and cried. I don't. See, you don't want the Bible. Kissed her, cried, ran to her daddy and said, I got to marry her. What kind of kiss was that? Some of you ought to tell certain people, let's just kiss and say goodbye. Jacob was fooled because he fooled people. He fooled his father, then he's fooled by his uncle, and he thought he would get Rachel, but instead the father gave him Leah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to the level of excitement, but I need to teach this in case I got to teach it somewhere else, right? And I need 10 of you to shout amen on this. Sometimes God will give you what you don't want. Because he knows it will be better to you than what you asked for. When you are chosen, God makes the decisions. When you are called, you make your own. Oh, yeah. And many are called. Yeah. That's why anything the chosen folk want, we go through hell. And at the end of the day, we get something we did not ask for. And you that are chosen that won't talk to me, when you got what you wanted, how did it really turn out? You weren't as happy as you portrayed to be. I want some of you to catch this phrase, then I'm about to fly the kite in a minute. Don't just get what you desire. Ask God to give you what you deserve. 
Look at somebody, tell them this. If they don't get happy, don't bless them after your season starts. Tell them you deserve much more than what you have. Tell them, and I'm going to get it by the end of this month. I deserve. The first six months hated my life. The next six months is going to fall in love with me. Get what you deserve. Stop being fooled by what you desire. We that have struggled and been hated on, we deserve better. If you believe it, don't just be shaken. Get involved and jump up and say better, better, better. Right, we're moving to the next level. I'm almost there. I've got one, two, three, four, five topics for this sermon. Bishop Senior looking at me like five topics. You ain't do no study. Five topics for this sermon. You can choose any of them, but they all will be mentioned in the scriptures or in in my sermon. But when I say them. Just jump up because you feel that they might make sense. The first sermon was reserve a praise. That's the first topic. (laughs) Prophet, can you explain them? Yes, I wouldn't ask you to stand if I'm not going to do it. Leah had three children for her husband and reserved one for God. Y'all ain't. And she called that one Judah. You follow? So sometimes you can't give a human everything. You got to reserve something for God. You that stood and didn't say amen, be seated, and the rest of you stay with me. The next topic I was going to use is called special delivery. And if I say this, thank you, first lady, fragrance of the house. If I say this to some of the young people and grown up scream, we can move on. And that is, God says, tell you, the next thing that you're about to produce, ain't nobody else seen it in all their life because this is handcrafted. In order for people to get it, they're going to have to come to you. God's about to give you something or someone that people are going to need. And the only way they can get connected is they have to come to you. I just prophesied again, but they didn't get happy. Leah has Judah. Then God closes her womb. He closes her womb after a praise. And you would think he would start producing for her after praise. Some of you have it wrong. If I praise him, God will give me a house. No, no, you got to praise him while he's giving you nothing but haters. And when God did not allow her to have another baby after praise for years, she had no more children after praise. What God was telling her is what I preached years ago for my 30 screamers is because you said Judah is mine. I want you to raise my praise. Y'all understand? I want you. I want you to give praise special attention. I'm giving away sermons tonight. Take them. Don't steal it. Just let me give it to you. And the prophetic topic is the one that you won't know how to scream off of that I'm not going to give you the reason for it yet. But I want you to look to the right and left and with a serious face tell your neighbor, handle your business. When I start hooping, because that's only four, I told you five, I'm going to be hooping on this real proclamation that will be prophetic for all of you who will praise him tonight 
like you never have before, just remember this and scream, praise pays. Just tell somebody, praise pays. But before praise pays, you've got to handle your business. The first order of business is you got to get rid of some people. And you didn't talk and I'll tell you why. If you change your company, God will change your currency. Now I know y'all don't believe. God is not funding you because you are not discerning enough to know who to share what he gives you with. Some of you have been funding your haters. Buying them clothes, letting them live with you, letting them ride in your car. And when things get out, you find out it's the same person you were helping. So what God did to spare your life for those who scream loud is he made you unproductive for a season. You cannot get out of me what I don't have. Oh, I'm sorry I'm boring you. You got to first learn to love me for who I am. Not what I have to offer. Some people don't want what's in your heart. They want what's in your hand. And once that hand has nothing else in it. They're gone. My job. Give me eight minutes then give me a B. But my job. Is to bring the church back to Jesus. My job tonight. That's why I'm talking like this. Is to cause people who say they love God. To get a passion. To praise him like they used to. Not waiting on the organ. Not waiting on the prophecy. But like your grandparents. I can't wait to get to the house of God. Like the anticipation. Yep, half of y'all not with me. And then uh, I have to get those who praise him right. I got to get you paid. I'm going to prophesy something. You're going to find out that a man of God has been among you at least for this season. That you who praise right tonight will be tight by the end of the month. God said, I made everything in a week. I don't need a month to get you straight. Now, y'all don't see where I'm going, but I will say this. Closed mouths don't get fed. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I'm almost there, and all that he's done for me, my soul has to cry out. Somebody as loud as you can shout glory. Praising God with passion will get you paid. And when you are an expert praiser for three folk, you have made people who hate you believe you have what you don't even have. Your praise dresses you up to look successful while you're being evicted. For the spirit of heaviness put on the garment. Praise is not just a sound, it's a gown. Y'all ain't talking. Praise is praise. I want to preach. And then the most mature statement is you must learn to praise God while experiencing pain. Now, you that are still bobbleheading, you ain't learned nothing yet. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. On the tip of your tongue is either your funeral or your future. Your house is stuck in your throat. You're choking on it. Your healing is stuck in your throat like a fur ball. That's because you keep your mouth shut when it should be open. I will enter his gates. Come on. With thanksgiving and I will enter his courts. will bless the Lord y'all come have church with me 
at all times and his praises shall be well in my mouth the church at large even the grand old church of God in Christ we perfected feet we perfected clapping and fancy dances but y'all got laryngitis because because the praise the most powerful praise is in your mouth I'll tell you why and see if through you scream you keep clapping your hands and arms will get tired you keep dancing, your feet going to get tired and your knees going to hurt. But God created a tongue that never gets tired. That's why it said it shall continually. Your tongue so powerful, you can talk in your sleep. If you knew that behind every real praise there was a production. I'm glad I wasn't born in the days of silent movies. I don't want... Glad I wasn't born when, well I was for some of it, where everything was just black and white. Some of your life is so black and white and quiet. Work, church, eat, sleep. Work, church, eat, sleep. Work, church, eat, sleep. Work, church, eat, sleep. Need a job. Ain't got no friends. Somebody hate me. That's just so black and white. But for you that praise them right tonight, God's going to bring some color to your life. You're going to start getting surprised. The area that was terrible is going to be terrific. The area that brought tears is going to bring joy. Because weeping may endure for a night. Come on, Sean, five minutes now. Be seated next to your praise partner. Praise is not just noise. Praise is not just for all of you elitists. A bunch of emotion. Even though movement and sound is necessary. I grew up. And after this, y'all young people help me because my older saints won't push me no more. But let me say something to you. I grew up where the mothers of the church would say, stop all that talking and tell God thank you. And if you were near your friend, they separated both of you. Now, what's real crazy for one person who wants to be a real millionaire is they made the one that was chosen sit near them. Nobody else got in trouble but you. You was like, I don't want to sit up there. They said, shut up and sit right here. And they taught us how to talk in church. They taught us how to testify. Giving honor to God to my pastor, assistant pastor, missionary, mothers of the church, saints and friends. I want to thank God that he woke me up this morning, clothed me in my right mind, activities of my limbs, and the blood flowing warm in my veins. <sighs> I want to thank God because he saved me. Thank you. Sanctified me. Baptized me. Filled me with the precious Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire. Huh. Those that know the worth of prayer, please pray my strength in the Lord. See, you young people didn't even know that. You didn't even know it. All you know is way make a miracle. All you know how to do is sing. You don't know how to praise. Because you think your singing is praise. No, singing is your gift. Praise is what you do when you are not on program. You think prophesying and preaching is a praise. No, that's a gift that God is sharing to the people. But preachers who don't praise are performers. Prophets who don't praise are witches. Y'all ain't talking. If you see somebody chosen, frozen, let me get out. That's why they can always hear names but don't know how to praise a name that is above every name. What y'all young people call a cap, huh? This, I'm going to church. Let me, let me hear an F, F sharp. Okay, that's Kojic. See how they woke up? This, this is a season to give birth. This is a season to bring forth. According to birth and the scriptures for 10 focal screen, this is a season for you to deliver. Real 
praise is not attached to a car. Money. Y'all quiet. Marriage. There must be a praise reserved just because he's God. Can I see about five authentic people that will shout glory just because I praise him because he woke me up this morning. I'm almost there. He clothed me in my right mind. The activities of my limbs. And the blood is flowing. Warm in my veins. Look at somebody. Grab them nicely. Tell them what a mighty God we serve. Before praise was in action. It was a person. Praise did not have a definition. Praise was the name of a person. If I say these words and ten of you catch it, I promise you a miracle by tomorrow afternoon. Praise is not just what I do. Praise is who I am. If I'm in the grocery store and the Lord hit me. If I'm on the airplane. See, some of you only do this. Some of us, we are this. I praise God like I'm in a marriage for better or for worse. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. To the resurrection do we part. Where in the world did that name come from? I'm about, I'm about to go to church. Where? Leave the mic as hot as you can. Where did that name come from? You just going into labor. And you just going to name it? And then his whole family said, nobody in our family is named after this. And she said, this one ain't for you nor your family. Yeah. 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 Now, when I do this, we're close to flying the kite. 50 of you look at me and make me feel like I'm a guest. And catch this now. She would have never had to give a man who didn't love her three when she could have fixed it by giving God the first one. She tried to win the heart of her husband by birthing everything for him. And at the end of the day, none of that changed who he was. Reason being, Dr. LaToya for 10 Screamers, is God should have been first. Look at that fake yell. Look to the right and left and tell somebody God is first. You hear me? must go back to being priority let me talk to those who are praises if it had not been y'all know the lyrics but do you feel the love for the Lord on my side where would I be who would I be I'm going to talk to you talk back well I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary. Wounded. Sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made Come on. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Don't just sing it. Do it. You see? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
Look at your neighbor, release them from whatever and tell them you got the right to scream to God all night if you want to. Because tell them by the end of June, God's going to handle business. Yell it. One last teaching point. One last teaching point. Matola Mahashe Brende Bakuria. Wanda Bahanshe. I'm sorry. One more teaching point. She called him Judah. You that went to school, you know way back in the day the letter J was not in the alphabet, it was a Y. So his name was Yada, not Judah. Jesus is Yehuda. English pronunciation, Jesus. That word, I feel good. That word, Yada, means to pray. When it only has the root word is yad. Somebody say Y A D. Yad. Boy, I'm about to go to church. That word means hand. Yad means hand. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. See, my empty hands are up and what's put in them is based upon what comes out of my mouth. Empty hands with no words remain empty. I got a few divas in here that ain't moving. I just ain't going to do all that. Tell the truth about how you're living. Research, examine yourself. I will bless thee. I will bless thee, O Lord. Ah, we'll bless thee, O Lord. Because with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee. I'm laughing and y'all going to think I'm playing, but God said, tell a hundred of you, I'm writing the checks right now. He said, because you didn't just raise your hand. But you had something in your mouth. And from the heart, the mouth speaks. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart allow those words to be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Touch somebody mind, tell them, excuse my behavior tonight. I'm about to get a little loud. And tell them this praise is connected to nothing but how good God is to me. I like that yell back there. Yad is a hand. Yad means a hand with a finger pointed. Yad is a person's hand with a finger pointed. I'm going to do this for 30 of you who will turn around, jump up, act foolish, but by the end of the month, we'll see who the fool is. God says, to you that praise me right, point at what you want. You ain't even got to ask for it. Directs God 
in the direction where there was barrenness. Come on, bless your neighbors. Point at all your neighbors. They this close to you. Don't let them leave barren. This feel like Church of God in Christ now. When you go to praising God, because that name Yod means God, after this, Max, I'll give you one more thing, then we go to church. When you praise God right with passion, get loud and don't care who's around. The sound goes to God. God then looks in the direction of the sound. And then he tells everything, that's the one. So God said, tell you, by the end of the month, he's going to point at you. But he can't point at what he can't hear from. So even though your haters are looking at you because they hate that you're praising God, at the same time, God's saying, right there. Yat also means axle. An axle is a device on the car that allows it to turn. Every time you praise God and you're about to go in the wrong direction, that praise turns you from where you could have been destroyed and put you on a better path. Some of you before tonight, you were on the wrong path, but your mouth just turned you all the way around late in the midnight hour. God is going to turn it around. It's going to work. Come on, Hoshanda. Come here. Just tell three or four people it's going to work in your favor now. Come on, talk to the neighbor. That's your friend. Tell them, ain't no need to worry. What the night is going to bring. God told me to tell you it'll be all over in the morning. And somebody in this sanctuary has to believe that God is going to turn it around by tomorrow morning. Your cancer has just been turned. Your blood pressure is turning. I know y'all don't believe me. What the devil meant for your evil, God's about to turn it for your good. That's because you didn't just give God a hand, you gave him a mouth. Watch it, mother. I hear that tongue speaking way up here, my Shianda. The church has become a church that's always looking for a handout instead of giving God what our ancestors gave. They said, I'm going to praise him. They were on a walker. They were in a wheelchair. They were blind and they were still praising him. You praise bargaining. Lord, you get me my sight, I'll praise you. God said, you're blind because you didn't. Lord, you give me a husband, I'll dance. God said, you're going to be solo because that's why you don't have one. Is you keep giving, you keep giving Jacob more than you give me. Why don't you just give me mine first and then see what I produce for you later? In my clothes almost now, there is one stretched out word, diamond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. James, there's one, I'm sorry that I bored you, Chairman, but there's one long word, and that word is yada lay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We ain't going to go to school and not use it. It's called yada lay. Yad by itself, it becomes praise when it becomes yada. When you know how to praise God right, it is called yadale. 
Yadale, I'm going to give you two definitions. You can ignore one, but you better scream on the other. Yadale means foreplay. I knew the sanctified folk would get quiet right there. Got all these kids in. Look it up. Yadale means foreplay. Yadale also means handled right. I feel my Noel Jones coming. It means without any disrespect, foreplay and foreplay then translates to handle well. Hold on. When I read this, somebody screams. So when you get God to inhabit praise, if you touch him right, he then gets turned on and performs at his peak. You know how men feel when you want everything and you don't praise them? Y'all ain't talking. You don't know how to handle them. You always want something and you got an empty hand. Y'all ain't talking. But when you go to God and you start just touching him. And he be like, why are you touching me? Just because you're good. Why are you touching me? Because you're kind. What you want? Nothing right now. I just want you. When you start talking kingdom trash to a good God y'all ain't talk you start making God stand up from his throne and he starts saying what is their desires uh, what is what should they get today uh, I wasn't gonna bless them until 60 days from now but the way they're touching me tonight uh, I think I will cut the time in half uh, and if we keep on touching them uh, I think I'll cut the time in half of that. And if we keep on touching him, God is going to tell some of you, I'm going to do it now. I dare you to shake somebody's hand and tell them, I know we have until the end of the month. But there are some things that I need God to do right now. Uh-huh, help me preach it. And if you need God to do it right now, then don't delay what God deserves. We are a hand clapping. We are a foot stomping. We are a tongue talking. We are a leaping church. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me y'all help me preach to a neighbor just tell him I'm saved and I'm sanctified touch somebody tell them Holy Ghost feel oh y'all ain't saying it you ain't got no Holy Ghost let's rewind it and go back to the confession and tell your neighbor if anybody ask you what's the matter with me Tell him I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side, and I'm running. Y'all better grab somebody, make that your partner for the rest of the night, and say, neighbor, how bad do you want a miracle? Tell them because I'm looking for somebody that knows how to handle me. Because how we handle each other will determine how we handle God. And after we handle God, God's going to turn around and handle us. He shall supply all of our needs. Y'all better preach to that one neighbor and say, oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches. All of you that are close not talking, get that infection back. According to his riches, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I am a praiser. I am a worshiper. And I've got scriptures in my mouth that God 
God's about to activate because I'm a praiser. Say neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Let me introduce you to a few of those scriptures. The first scripture is God will. Y'all better talk to talk a supply. All of your need. Tell your neighbor you heard that one before. Tell him I got four more scriptures that's going to change your life before the end of the month. Here goes the next scripture. Nay and all these things. Go and preach to me. We are more than a conqueror through him that loved us. If that neighbor didn't get excited, change your neighbor. Because they got quiet too quick. And say neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I got three more scriptures. Then I'm going to let you go. Here's the third one. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If that person did not get excited, scoot on over. Find another big mouth and say, neighbor, I've got two scriptures left. Then I'm going to leave you alone. Here's the fourth one. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Lean on somebody next to you and say, Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Grab their neighbor and shake them. And say, I only got one scripture. One scripture left. And if you don't get excited over the quote of this scripture, you're going to be barren for a long time. But if you give God glory after this scripture, your life will change by tomorrow morning. The scripture says, Yay! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, Ow! He said, Ow! He said, Ow! I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you done got so loud that I saw something behind you. Ask your neighbor, what's behind me? Tell him it's a miracle with your name on it. Say, neighbor, the worst is over and the best is yet to come. I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me he picked me up yeah he turned me around somebody by the hand and make them preach with you and say neighbor before June is over God's making a promise with us tonight 
that whatever we go after, we will birth it. We will deliver it. Tell them the proof are in the words of a song. The words of this song is over 50 years old. Help me tell your neighbor the words. Jesus said, if you go, I'll go with you. Open up your mouth and I'll speak for you. Lord, if I go, tell me what to say. They are, yeah. I'm not Bishop Jakes, but y'all tell five people, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. I'm getting it by the end of the month. Tell them I might get it by tomorrow or morning. So tell them if you hear me scream tonight, that's because God's making me productive. I'm about to be blessed from the crown of my head oh, to the sole of my feet. Y'all too quiet for the miracle. You that are watching online, you too quiet for the miracle. Hey, oh, yes. Somebody that knows you're about to tap in to the best season of your life, clap your hands and say yes. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, 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 oh yes, hey, 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 oh. I get him a hoshia. Do me the ocean, Nana. I'm done, hallelujah. Hey, Koba Hanshi, Nana. Do me on show. Do me a favor, all of you tonight, East Texas. If you fully are persuaded that this month is not a hoax, but God's about to renovate and redo your entire life for the better, I'm going to give you 60 seconds to dance right where you are, and it better be a good one for God. Hurry! Watch it, Pastor Darius. Go ahead, sir. Praise the mothers. You have 20 seconds. You have my shando. Now put your hands together. Praise him, son.
do me a favor. You don't have to dance no more. Especially some of you who feel above all of this. But if I've got a few of you that know this year, the year before, the year before, it has been hell. It has really been difficult. And you did all you can to still go to church, pay your tithe, keep your sanity. But you had to play the role. And you tired of faking? God said, this dance is your way of telling the devil, you should have killed me when you had me. Y'all got 30 seconds? One, two, Everybody loves it. Y'all better give God his first. Nobody better get nothing out of you unless God got something first.
And when there's no music, do you have a mouth? What's in your mouth? What's in your mouth? Hallelujah. Ishalamahai. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great Thou art. Thank you. Nothing matters right now but him. Nothing. He's priority. Yes, Lord. Shodamaha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let these words be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. You are our redeemer. Hallelujah. I want to close with this. Hold a neighbor's hand if they're close enough. If not, it's a fine. Don't scoop. If they're worshiping, don't touch them at all. Let them stay with God. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Eba, I hear the word restoration. Don't hold it. Young people, open that. Don't hold it. Stop trying to fit in. Glory. Sound like 1950 church. When the mothers would be around us saying, tell him thank you. Hey, man, show them the heart. Glory. Look at me. I want to say two things. Because you probably said, where did that praise pays come from? If you were smart, if you remember the text, you would at least want to hear within one minute where did praise pays come from. The Bible says, look at me, we're done. Oh, I ain't going to stop that because that's, he's doing Judah. Some of you ain't even got enough 
win the praising. Because your praise done been on COVID vacation so long. But let everything that have breath. said praise the Lord then it said praise ye Lord catch this Dr. Diamond Freeman closing where's praise pays chairman thank you for bringing me remember this God closed her womb after praise gave her a few years to raise her praise until her praise could provide for her y'all missed it you got to take your children to a certain place in life until your children can then start taking care of you. So she took care of praise until praise started taking care of her. The Bible says, and when praise was grown, let's close here, that God touched her again and created a way for her to get pregnant one more time. And a child was born named Issachar. Here's where only the men jump. She said, God has given me this son also. That name Issachar means I've gotten my wages. Issachar. I hear what you say. It means sons of the time. No, they were the sons of the time, but that's not what their name means. It said, God has given me my wages. That means he's paid me for all the hell that I've been through. Catch this, and one of y'all scream at me. It said, and Jacob was coming from work. Read it when you get home. And the woman he hated, her sister Rachel said, give me of your son's mandrakes because Rachel needed in vitro. She needed some help with getting pregnant because she didn't use praise at all. And Leah said, what will you give me if I give you an anecdote to get pregnant? She said, read it, and some woman should jump, I'll let you sleep with my husband one more time. Leah in the next verse says, he is but a small thing in my eyes. Which means praise corrected her vision. Oh, yeah. She told her sister, how you gonna give me what I had first? And when he came, she told him, you're going to sleep with me or who I choose. And he said, no, I don't. I hate you. Then her next verse was for screamers, I bought you tonight. Picture being so blessed, you can hire who hates you and pay for them over and over again. She was over him because she matured and raised her praise. Look at somebody and tell him, I'm over all the stuff. I'm just over it. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. If they didn't get happy, don't touch him. Because that's how fast you lose it. I told you you have a responsibility to that word. And debt-free people don't practice silence. And I know what it is to be debt-free because I am. I, I'm, I'm not joking, I am. I'm not bragging, I am. I've got other problems, but that ain't one of them. 
God has been good to this little man. Because I refuse to stop praising him. Through the good and the bad, whether happy or sad. Praise is what I do. He's first in my life and every demon knows it. Every demon with a body or without a body. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. He shall not have kosher behind. Somebody shout thank you. Hold that hand as a point of contact. I saw the way some of you gave. I'm concerned about the body of Christ at large concerning faith. So I'm going to start a new series after next week in my church. Just simply called faith. I did sin for two months. I did holiness for a month. Taught on the prophetic for a month and a half. All year I've been teaching series in my church. But I think I need to prove that faith shows up like a credit report. That's why I said, according to the measure of your faith. Then it said, if you preach, wait on your ministry. Then he said, and when you preach, minister on the level of your faith. Not on the level of your ability. Because what you preach, you will be tested by. So don't preach the whole Bible or you're going to be tested in every area of your life. Did y'all catch that? And I was sitting there and I got ready to give the whole 700 because I get frustrated when people have to cause people who love God to give. And the Lord said, don't you do that. I was like, Lord, listen, that's the type of offerings that I try to avoid because I grew up doing that. When the deacons stay at the table, we need $8,500 more. Sounds like an auction. When people, when, yeah, when people love God, they just do. Talk to me, some of you wearing these expensive clothes. Just talk to me. It's bad to have a house that has no closet space for clothes, but you got a lot of room to put money in your bank account. I told people, grow into yourself. Always have something you give God first. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Woman in the, it looks like a jean jacket. You got uh, blue earrings. Stand up a minute. Yeah. God is about to release to you, and don't get excited about this, but it's real, about a quarter of a million dollars. You are, you are owed some things. You are really owed some things. And the devil tried to discourage you and say, these things are never going to happen. God said, give them until the fall, and I'm going to start cutting your checks. I'm going to start moving you around. Your season of struggle is over, and somebody ought to help that lady give God praise. Everything you are owed, you are going to get it plus some. Plus some. I'm looking for the last time for two hairdressers. Who are hairstylists? I'm looking for two. Stan, and that's two. That's who I'm looking for. Both of you, I don't know which one of you. Somebody's watching me on social media too. Um, a name came and left. It started with an O, but it left me. Um, yeah, Overton. Over 10, I don't know how you're going to do this, son, but I've been watching you pull on God and love God, and you're going to run down the aisle, don't hurt nobody. You're going to get half of what I'm about to say, and if you praise God, you'll get all of it. Wait a minute. How old are you? Are you married? All right. He, uh, are you going to tell them what I tell you? All right, good. You're going to run. Yours is going to be a miracle. Yours is going to be a production God says, 
what he did for this Overton lady was he allowed her to open up some, some day spa. <laughs> You said confirmation because you wanted one? You want to shop? You got it. Start running. I know y'all don't believe it, but watch. He ain't hurting nobody. How long, dear, how long have you been licensed, certified? 15 years, are you working in a shop? Say it again. All right. So, if I told you, and before I tell you, tell Miss Overton that, that the name is called like anointed something. It's like, it's like anointed hands or something like that. Do you have a franchise name for your businesses? Is it trademarked? I need you to trademark it, and when I say this, it's up to you. And somebody close around your area, their student debt's about to be paid, too. I don't want to say which one, because they've been quiet all service. But let me say this to you. You are about to be worth, in about the next year or less, $2.5 million. And God says, at that time, you can buy your second house out of state. Y'all ain't talking. Are y'all happy for her or you're not? That's how we used to have church. And y'all look like this is something new. That's called grandma church. By now they have the little sheet out running and covering and running and covering. So I need to tell you all what the Lord told me. He said half of the church, and we're going to do it quick will seed a hundred dollars prophetically the others will seed 30. if y'all listen to the prophet according to the bible if he or she is a real prophet it says when you obey them you will prosper if i am not real then do not budge at all but if you ever played the lottery you need to play jesus this night because ain't none of your tickets clear but that name don't fail you cannot obey God and not produce. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory one more time. Now, I want to say something to you. I want to say something to you. And this ain't about you giving, even though I see you got it, because you're the chairman. God says, if your faith expands tonight and you really believe it, he's doing two things. Don't think I'm a false prophet. Number one. He's giving you new organs to heal your body. He wants to fully heal you because he's ready to move you into a new church building. God says, I will no longer leave you in the building with nine foot ceilings. God says, he needs to put you on the main road where people can get to you. Where people can hear you. Your preaching is beyond what people are getting to hear because you have to preach according to who you feed. But God says, your discouragement of pastoring ends today because I'm going to give him sheep that can eat what I put in his spirit and I'm going to give him more property to do my will and somebody ought to clap and shout yes. Young lady, how old are you in the glasses? 23? 
Did you go to college? Do you still have a student loan? Did you hear me tell somebody in the back, I said, I said, God's going to pay your loan off. I said, but they stayed too quiet all service. Would you like that miracle? Then put some noise on it because you're about to get it. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to help her. God's going to pay off of 30 something thousand dollars worth of a student loan bill. You are number 85 on the President Biden forgive debt list. After this season, they'll do it no more. You getting in on the tail end. Somebody ought to shout yes. When I tell 50 of you to stand to give the 100, don't take long, don't second guess, especially the man that should give it, who on this side, I won't say who, who's driving with a suspended license. I need you to give so you can get your license back. See, God knows who to point at and who not to, but he'll speak to where you know he's speaking. So I wouldn't hold that because if you got pulled over by the cops tonight, you'd need money to get out of jail for driving with a suspended license, right? So it's best to give God his first. Here we go. We're about to look Baptist. And we ain't counting it. We'll just stand here. And who's these lovely people? These are part of the committee. Hello. You part of the committee? Good. Can I ask you a question? And you won't take it personal. Have you ever been married before? When you walked over, a little white dress fell out the ceiling, right? God said, tell her, I had to stop the, 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 the first thing. I had to stop it. Because it would have meant you evil. It would have done you terrible. He said, but tell her. And I don't want you to take it. He said, tell her. After two or three practices, I think she's ready now. Tell her this man is going to supply all her needs. She will not have to worry about a thing. Are y'all clapping or looking around? And what's crazy is he's already around. Hey man, you married? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. No, right? If I told you that your whole life shifts after you buy your next house, would you believe me? I'm going to have you run because God says, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Because God says, you are, since you were young, like Jonah. You have the gift of prophecy and discernment. You know when folk are real and fake. But you have nothing to do with it. Except feel it. Since your mama's womb, you were really born to do what I'm doing. You ran, but you didn't get away. You ran. But you didn't get away. You ran. Nice man. Generous man. Would help anybody. But God said when he runs up and down this aisle one time, I'm going to give him a new home. I'm going to start his new life. I'm going to reclaim him for my glory and tell him he will own three businesses, but he will not have to work a nine to five another day in his life. Run up that aisle and come on back. And I'm laughing because God says that's not his character. I'm glad you obeyed. The 50 people that will do this, 
you will remember that God has sent a vessel of honor to you. Hey, is this property paid off? God is going to some kind of way cause a member to join here who's going to have a certain connection with a grant writer. They're going to write the grant so that you can somewhat pay off the whole church by opening up something that looks like a daycare or pre-K services. What? It's in a separate building, but God is going to, um, he's going to fix all the pipes, all the windows, all the window seals. Because that's the real reason why that building that's not really occupiable. And they're not going to want to give you this grant because of a few haters. But when you have them, we produce. So God is going to have a lady in the board meeting. She's going to Google you. She's going to do her own research. She's white. She's going to make sure that you get enough money as long as you do the school to pay this property off. Debt free. Oh, you're gonna need you're gonna need a certain teacher with a certain license so that they can run this program. I'm gonna ask God send her in the next 60 days. I'm gonna ask God to send whoever this is. Are y'all jealous or are we? This is one jurisdiction. And I like what this woman of God over here is saying. She said, if he do it for one, he got to do it for us all. The 50 people, you should have no more debate. Hold on. 